Okay, back for another video here. Today we're going to be going over settings for doing nighttime time-lapse photography. Stuff like this, where you can get cool light trails for traffic, you can get amusement parks at night, which is kind of neat. Uh, you can get, well, this was the Robson Square Skating Rink in Vancouver. But today we're going to be going over the settings for ones that I did like this. Now, this is a couple years ago during Christmas time. Um, big thing you want to do is you want to scout a cool location, obviously. You want to get uh, some static images along with some movement um, to go along with it. Um, but yeah, find a good location. In this case, there was a Christmas tree. There was the art gallery. Uh, it was quite busy. There's a lot of people walking around. It was a nice clear night uh, during Christmas time. And I wanted to get this Christmas tree uh, beside the art gallery downtown Vancouver. Some good foot traffic around it, people taking pictures, posing, that kind of thing. So there's going to be sort of a juxtaposition of a lot of people moving along with a lot of people standing around in front of it. Um, but the best thing you, or the first thing you want to do is you want to do a bunch of test shots when you get there. Obviously this picture is too dark. Um, I kept the same settings on all of them. The only thing I changed on all my test shots was the uh, f-stop. So this one was shot at uh, f-13 and as you can see it's quite dark. You can't really see the art gallery. You can see a little bit of the Christmas tree. Buildings in behind are kind of dark. Um, so next test shot I took, same settings. The only thing I changed again was the uh, f-stop. And uh, this is why it's important to take test shots before you do your time lapse because you don't want to set up your time lapse sit there for 45 minutes and uh, say oh my god all my pictures are too dark or they're too light or whatever so do a lot of test shots because you are going to be there for a while and you want to make sure you get it right uh, this particular one was f9 so as you can see it's a little bit brighter you can see there's movement of people in it which is good that's the two second two second exposure i should say um, to sort of get that uh, that movement of people um, Perfect example, bottom left corner of this image, you can see there's a sort of a ghosting image of people walking by. There's the guy standing in front of the Christmas tree taking a picture. He's perfectly still, which is kind of cool. Um, same thing, uh, wide angle, 18 mil, two second exposure. I bumped this down to 7.1. It's getting better. Still not exactly what I want. Um, and these are all images before post-processing. So in Lightroom, I did sort of increase a lot of the... Uh, the uh, pop of the images, if you want to call it that, but uh, all the settings are, are the same. Um, this particular one, it's getting close, pretty good. Uh, I like this one, the levels are good. Um, in Lightroom, I did some uh, post processing of these images, uh, but the important thing is you want to get this dialed in before you start shooting because you can always work on them afterwards but as long as all the images have the same settings to them um, that's the important thing so this one I settled on f6.3 it's enough of a depth of field so your foreground's in focus your trees in focus your backgrounds in focus you're not sort of getting anything out of focus um, and again shoot full manual mode once you've done post-processing your images um, in whatever images processing uh, software you do, um, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of images, obviously, um, as an image sequence, and that's important. Uh, import that into your video editing program. Um, make sure they are an image sequence so that your video editing program knows what to do with them. Um, whether you keep the same file numbers or you want to rename them, that's up to you as long as they are a sequence of images. Um, drop them into your uh, your timeline or your editing. I use DaVinci Resolve so you put them in the media pool. As you can see still uh, start frame is 4151, end is 4303, there's 153 images. Not a lot so it's going to be a pretty short time lapse. Um, probably shot for maybe half an hour on this one. Um, drop that into your timeline and again this is super simple. All we're doing with, uh, with Resolve and all you can really do or all you can do with say video maker or video editor or final cut or whatever is you just want to drop that image sequence into your program and you're just going to export it as a video unless you want to do some other changes to it um, scrub through it you can see there's some movement which is kind of cool um, but again the trees stationary the art gallery stationary everything is stationary it's just the people that are moving so you're going to have that uh, that video of sort of some action going on the one thing is this is a 4x3, obviously these are straight out of the camera. I want to make it a 6x9, 16x9 I should say. Uh, so there is going to be a little bit of post-processing in the video editing in the form of a zoom. And this is just going to be a static zoom. All I'm doing is increasing the size of the image. Um, 
or zooming in on the image to make it a 16 by 9. But as you can see, if I zoom in just straight ahead, it cuts off the top of the tree. I obviously want the star at the top of the tree, so I'm going to have to move it down a little bit. It's still cool. Get the full tree, get the art gallery, get the people moving in front of it. I've just kind of cut off a little bit of the bottom of the image more than anything, which is still fine by me. Um, but keep that in mind when you're framing your shots. Um, you just kind of want to leave room for a little bit of editing, maybe, if you want uh, to get that 16 by 9 ratio. Once you're done that, um, again, we're not really doing too much to this. We're just going to export this as a video because it's pretty much done. I've done all the post-processing in Lightroom uh, to the images. And all I'm using this video editing program for is to put it together as a time-lapse video. So import the sequence, export the video, give it a name, um, find somewhere to put it. I'm going to export this as a 4K video, um, 24 frames per second. I'm doing it as a QuickTime H264. Set it in your render queue and uh, let it do its thing. Um, important thing too, once you've done this, you want to make sure that you uh, go ahead and save your project <laughs> before you close the programs. Um, I've lost many a project that way. Uh, and then uh, close the program and we'll take a look at the video. Ah, it's pretty cool. Looks good. Looks really good. So yeah, super simple, super easy. Best things to remember is find a cool location to shoot at. Make sure your frame is framing is good. Uh, set a camera up on a sturdy tripod. Can't stress that enough. Shoot a handful of test shots. Uh, dial in your settings. Always shoot in manual mode um, so that you're consistent through all your pictures. Super, super important. Put it in manual mode because you want every image to be exactly the same. At night, you don't have to worry about flicker too much. Um, oh, and don't worry about people staring at you while you're shooting pictures or time lapses because you are going to be there for a while. Maybe bring a chair. That's a good tip. Um, or a stool or something to sit on because you will be there for a while. Uh, as always, if you like this uh, video, um, punch that little thumbs up button down there. Um, if you like want to see more of these, uh, subscribe to my channel because I'll be doing these generally once a week. And uh, we'll see you again. Thanks.